It's a petition for an audience with a lamentation of mists. The lamentation has authority over the Lyceum and the Forge of Souls. Perhaps you have a need for her. The unworthy scribe shakes his head sadly. The lamentation prefers to choose her servants herself. It's beyond my remit to procure service for her. And besides, he glances around at the wealth of moldering shelves and scattered clay tablets. She is excruciatingly busy. Hmm. Offer a tribute. Provide an endorsement for my litigator. Another type of <clears throat> tribute. Let's see, what is this? One Ministry Approved Literature? Um, scraps of Ancient Knowledge. Endorsement? Plus one scrap of Ancient Knowledge? Hmm. But yeah, let's do that. Provide an endorsement from your litigator. They'll vouch for you and hopefully secure a less costly means of seeing the lamentation. The nameless spirit leans across the unworthy scribe's desk and whispers into where his ear would have been. Whatever was said must have been equivalent to two scraps of ancient knowledge as the scribe waves you through. The scribe leads you through the Lyceum and towards the Chamber of Restoration, where the lamentation of mists spends her days sifting through the ashes. Oh, you look like a scribe. Oh, and I, I, I can do an ambition thing here. A scribe spinster the size of a chapel rests in the center of the Chamber of Restoration. Her wings are pale as lambskin and thick as a Bible. She holds her wings to her and keens in soft utterances of fragmentary speech. She's bound by a long length of chain to a massive book, illuminated in black and gold and shackled to the floor. As you enter, her blind face turns to you. A scribe spinster? This large? And one that can talk? It does make sense for a scribe spinster to be here, because, I mean, they're all obsessed with preserving the knowledge of the stars, right? That's their thing. That's what they do. Hmm. Wait, what is this? Beseech the lamentation to yoke you to the Lyceum. If accepted, you will become yoked. But I already am yoked. How can I get here without being yoked? Is that like... Is that a permanent yoking? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Let's beseech the Lamentation for a Testament of Salt, because I only had one and have used it. The Lamentation can bestow this, the recognition that a spirit is liberated from the shackles of the mortal life. The trials for the Testament of Salt take place in the sepulchral archives below the reading room. Lazulite pillars thick as the ribs of a colossus hold up the many vaulted roof. Great windows, bereft of glass, allow sunlight to flood in, bright as death. All but the nearest pillars are obscured in splendid, immortal radiance. <clears throat> Three bodies are required to test the validity of your claim. Should you fail, punishment will be visited upon them. Three of my crew... Mmm. Mmm. I don't... I, I don't know how successful I'm going to be. I have no idea. Crew, I'm going to do my best, okay? The lamentation hanging from her long chain on a pillar before you. She requests that you select three companions to act as a guarantee of your good faith. Servants are considered suitable, but she supposes friends or employees will do. Whom will you select? Oh, they make you choose the type of person? Stokers, signalers, or gunners? <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Three gunners? 
the bloody-handed soldiers of your engine, stinking of oil and shot. They understand death. They will not be surprised. <laughs> God. Straws are drawn. A grim acceptance dawns. <laughs> I will undergo the trial of somnolence. Undergo my trial. Supplicants must undergo one of three trials to test their worthiness. The selection is at the Lamentation's discretion. You step into the bright, guided by the Lamentation's voice. Your three crew members are behind you. The ground dips. There are stars, and then your vision darkens, adjusts. You're at the bottom of an oubliette. What is that? An oubliette is a secret dungeon with access only through a trap door in its ceiling. Huh. So I'm at the bottom of an oubliette. The light is a sliver in the sky. In your hands you hold a box. Inside the box you must put your dreams. Place a dream in the box. What will you surrender? It must be a good dream, something pleasing or comforting. Something you cannot bear to relinquish, and yet must. A dream of home, you'll lose a point of hearts. A dream of love, lose a point of iron. Lose a point of mirrors. Oof. I don't think I'm going to do this too many times. <laughs> I almost want to just do hearts, because I suck so much out of it. At it, that it's already kind of just like, forget it. But maybe I should do iron. I don't... Hmm. Oh, you know what makes sense? Yeah, let's put a dream of love in here. Perhaps it was a foolish dream, but you cherished it. I'm not going to say that Elizabeth has completely, utterly given up, but... I think Elizabeth is mostly given up on being in love with the incognito princess with everything that's happened. We still have to see the end of that story, but yeah, I don't think she loves her anymore. I don't know if she ever loved her, but I don't think she is interested in pursuing a relationship with her at all. Let's do that. <clears throat> the box grew as heavy as your heart, yet your step is lighter. When one accepts, they will not know love. They have acquiesced to despair. But what can harm you now? There's a lock on the box. You turn the key. Surrender my dreams or imagine something better. Hmm. I can give up my dreams gladly if my nightmares were consuming. Hmm. Something is coming. Stones begin to skitter down the shaft of the oubliette. It's coming for your box. God, what is it? A monster that wants my dreams? Let's imagine something better. Your dreams is, are not as interesting as all that. You have something better to lose. It enters the oubliette. Its limbs press upon the walls, quaking the stone like an erratic heartbeat. Its shadow seals away the last of the light. There is only you, this bright, yearning memory, and the cold, earthy breath on your face. Yearning memory. There's a tongue in your ear. It's insistent, focused upon its prize. It's neither concerned for your well-being nor wishing you harm. The memory fades like a portrait bleached by the sun. It and the visitor are gone. Shortly afterwards, the unworthy scribe comes to help you out of the hole. You've achieved the Testament of Salt. Good. So my crew are fine? Also, damn, I really want to be careful with how I spend the Testament of Salt, because that is hard to get. So I need to offer a tribute to see the uh, Lamentation of the Mists again.
Well, let's do our ambition then. Ask for permission to see the role of Ash. The bedeviled didact needs to consult it to learn more about the strife between the sons. The lamentation examines you for a long moment. One wooden finger, long as a spear, taps thoughtfully on the floor. Then she rattles off a staccato set of directions through the lyceum. The didact scribbles them down. Return here afterwards, she says. Would speak. <clears throat> Leaving the Lamentation's presence, you follow her directions into the jumbled chaos of the Lyceum. The route is complicated but seems largely untraveled, as if the local denizens avoid it. Eventually, you enter a cavernous chamber. The bedeviled Didact gasps. The Roll of Ash is not a book or a scroll. It's a library. The chamber is huge, its walls gridded with square alcoves reaching all the way to the ceiling. In each alcove is a marble tablet engraved with sigils of the correspondence. Allow the didact to conduct his research. He dons a set of stained glass spectacles and a tin hat, and his fingers dance over a tangle of charms at his neck. Only then does he begin to read. These are the names of a son, he says, indicating the higher sigils on a slab. And this, he frowns at a lower sigil, perhaps most mundanely translates as cause of death. This place is a cenotaph, Ceno, cenotaph? a memorial to dead stars. He examines several more slabs. See... The suns differ, but the cause of death is identical in every case. An exchange of courtesies. He steps back, counting the rows and ranks of the alcoves. Hundreds. He shudders abruptly. I think that's enough. We should return to the lamentation. <clears throat> An exchange? Change of courtesies is the cause of death of all of the stars that have died? What? Exchange of courtesies? What kind of weird ass euphemism is that? You have learned something you should not. Indeed, I want to learn more. Return to the lamentation. You retrace your steps through the Lyceum. The didact is quiet. When you emerge from the Lyceum, the lamentation sends for you immediately. Well, she asks, crawling forward on her angular limbs to loom over you. The sigil scrawled wooden mask of her face is as ever unreadable. I think... The didact hesitates. I think a great many stars have died under the veneer of this courtesy. Hundreds of them, in fact. The lamentation issues a shrill, jagged sound. Is she laughing? That chamber? One annex of Roll of Ash. Annex 34, she says, of 278. Then she dismisses you. She has had her fun. The didact turns to you. Can we return to New Winchester? I need to think. So hundreds and one, 278. So yeah, many, many, many thousands of stars have died. I presume all because of courtesy? <laughs> hmm. The bedeviled didact wants very badly to go home. Fair enough. <clears throat> oh, we're all the way back out. Well. Let's go back in. Petition for an audience. How many scraps of ancient knowledge? I have two left. So I can visit them two more times. Beseech the lamentation to yoke you to the Lyceum. Whatever that means, given that I'm already yoked. 
The lamentation leans close, balancing on its spindly limbs unsteadily. Her blind face looms near to yours, like a moon about to cause a lot of tidal disruption. She searches for an appropriate analogy, and at last settles upon a, a termite mound. She suggests that the library is like such a thing. It has its needs and its workers to see to those needs. There are threats to the harmony of the mound, parasites and predators. There are rules to obey and hierarchies to observe. Are you, the Lamentation wonders, a suitable termite? <clears throat> she flies back to perch upon a pile of huge black tablets. She's waiting an answer. Uh. I have inquired, indeed. I can't do anything else? Okay. Maybe because I'm already yoked? I don't know, that was strange. Let's inquire about the Forge of Souls, said to dwell within the Lyceum. You've heard that the Suns used it to fashion new life. Is it true? The unworthy scribe hisses like a kettle on the boil. The sapphires in his eye sockets dim. The forge is under the Amaranthine Edict, he rasps. For your benefit, that means that the Sapphire King has taken it under his protection to prevent against unwise use. Once it was the province of all kings, the westernmost has learnt the painful lesson of that mistake. The unworthy scribe drums his fingers against the stones of his desk. Be satisfied that you have been allowed within the Lyceum. Be content with its wonders. Do they not suffice? They don't. I want more. <laughs> it's under the Amaranthine Edict. So the Sapphire King is the son of the Blue Kingdom, the one who controls things here, the westernmost king. Okay, two options to get to the Forge of Souls, bribe the scribe or mount an expedition. <clears throat> hmm. What do I bribe him with? 500 sovereigns? That's no big deal. And I have a litigator with me? Yep. An expedition would cost a moment of inspiration. I don't have very many of those. Three fuel. That's fine. Three supplies. Not really so fine. I guess I'd have to buy Petrichor. That would kind of suck. Let's bribe the scribe. Bribe the scribe. You will require assistance from your litigator. They'll know how to do this without risk of causing a scene. Please work, please work, please work. Damn, it worked. I know it's not like a percent chance to roll, but like, it wouldn't surprise me if they just took the money and then threw me out and banned me from the place. The spirit floats towards the underappreciated scribe who looks as alarmed as it is possible for a jewel-encrusted skeleton to look alarmed. A tablet is produced. The jewels studded on the scribe's bones are contemplated, their value calculated. A debt could be paid with these, the spirit considers. The scribe is happy to show you to the forge and to accept your sovereigns. The unworthy scribe drums his fingers frenetically against his desk. One supposes there is only so much harm you could cause. The forge remains unkindled. This way, if you please. Unkindled? How would I rekindle the forge of souls? Because it's not going to do anything unless it's burning. <clears throat> The unworthy scribe leads you through the Lyceum, down and deeper into its vaults. You pass unlit furnaces and empty vats, the hollowed-out shells of colossal towers, all shrouded with a thick carpet of gem-inflected dust. The scribe tells you that once, all of the Lyceum was the forge, or rather the Lyceum was a small part of the forge. But this, he tells you, <coughs> coughing, <laughs> But this, he tells you, leading you up a dizzying stone stair, was its heart. The Forge of Souls. The forge comprises the Colossus of Stone, uh, Colossus of Stone Towers at the heart of the Lyceum, huddled together as though frightened. A single gate permits entry into the innermost sanctum. 
The ground is carpeted in knee-high drifts of scintillant chromatic dust. At the base of the forge, there's a lone figure. The first venturer, guardian of the Forge of Souls, now sifting through the dust and ash. Speak to the man at the forge's base. He guards the forge in his own way. A man who spends his time tending the forge. He's covered in scars from old frostbite acquired from traveling across the skies. When he's not working, he can be found in the courtyard between the forge and the Lyceum, sifting through the sands of dust and gemstone accrued at the forge's base. Ask about himself. What is he doing here? The man smiles, creasing his aged face. He introduces himself and seems genuinely curious about your own reasons for being here. He tells you that he journeyed here long ago, before Her Majesty opened the door to the heavens. He and a bold Z captain slipped through and had the skies to themselves. Now he looks after the forge. He has, he mentions, made a promise to a friend long ago. Hmm. This might be referencing Sunless Skies, because there was an ending where you could actually go through the Avid Horizon. I think with someone else, maybe? Um, and that ended your captain? Like, they didn't... I don't think they died, it just ended their story? You stopped following them after that? You don't know what happened to them on the other side of the Avid Horizon? So when they mention he and a bold Z captain slipped through it before Her Majesty opened it, I think that might be what they're talking about. Share stories. Perhaps he'll tell you some of his own in exchange. He fetches wine. Greyfield's famous mushroom wine from the Neath. Not many bottles left, he confesses. I must be careful. I promise to save the last. He fills your cup and his and asks about your adventures and the long road that brought you to the Blue Kingdom. At last, you angle the conversation towards himself. Ah, he says. I was the first through the horizon. Not the Parzifal. I was. We opened the gate and zailed through. I wasn't alone as I am now. He smiles. My apologies, as I have been until now. His conversation turns somber as he speaks of his old companion, whose duties have since been taken on by the Clerk of Sevens, who opted to take their place. The Venturer, too, serves out his, serves out his sentence here. One day he hopes he will zail the skies again. Definitely talking about sunless skies, or sunless sea, rather. If I share more stories, are they going to tell me anything else, or is it going to be the same thing? It's the same thing. Ask his advice on the forge. It's dormant. Might it be otherwise? The venturer chews his lip thoughtfully. Owing to a technicality of procedure, I am custodian of the forge, but I'm forbidden from repairing it. He picks up a handful of glass. It pours through his fingers like sand through an hourglass. The Lamentation of Mists is supposed to keep an eye on me. I'm forbidden to fix the forge. You are not. If you could convince her to look the other way. There's a sparkle in his eyes. Well? Petition the Lamentation of Mists for permission to repair the forge. Hell yeah! Let's go. Return to the forge. Back out. <coughs> Cough. <clears throat> Leave so that it stops being laggy. I have one scrap of ancient knowledge left, so I can visit them one more time. Um, I can also get in with Ministry of Proof Literature as well. Request permission to repair the Forge of Souls. The Lamentation would not technically speaking, be responsible for its restoration. Abruptly, she dismisses the unworthy scribe. As the great bronzewood doors swing closed, the lamentation crawls closer to you, 
softly keening as she leans over you. You must use the forge to make new scry spinsters for her. Her tone is insistent, desperate. They were made here once, before their library was destroyed. Then you may do as you wish. The Amaranthine Edict over the forge would not be broken as long as nothing new was made at the forge. The westernmost king would not concern himself with that. She's been alone for so long, and her work at the Lyceum would only benefit. She drifts away from you, still whispering. So if I'm the one who repairs it, and we don't make anything... When they say don't make anything new at the forge, I think they mean like an entirely new entity. Like if you're just making more of a thing that has already been made, that's okay. So more scribe spinsters is okay. She's been alone for so long and her work at the Lyceum would only benefit. Aw, so she wants friends. She's lonely and she wants scribe friends. Heck yeah, I'm going to make you some friends. Are they going to try to kill me like all the other ones? I'm still going to make you some friends. I'm just kind of curious. Can I just go straight to the forge? Or do I have to bribe them again? Wait, how... Wait, how do I get back there? If I just look for it, it's the same thing before, where it's like, uh, perhaps there's someone beyond the gate who can help. <coughs> <coughs> ah, return to the Forge of Souls. There we go. You know the way now. Repair the Forge. The first venturer can assist in restoring the Forge. Within the forge are many chambers, housing ovens and kilns, furnaces and forges. They're blackened with soot and glass, and all stand empty. Once every chamber of the forge is ruled by its own spirit, who allowed the chamber to perform its functions. Now they're gone, mad or lost or slumbering. To relight the forge, those spirits will need to be drawn back. I can provide a condemned experiment for the forge. My god. I feel like if I did that, everything would come out evil. Some, like, some demonic spirit responsible for making everything. <laughs> Bronzewood. Well, let's provide souls. Got a jumble of undistinguished souls. The first venture looks over your collection of souls... Uh, slag, really, but we must whet their appetites. Right, it's... The purpose is just to draw back the spirits, not like... We're not putting, like, brand new spirits in there. We just want the spirits to be like, Hey, I sense something over here. The forge is coming back. There are eerie lights in the forge as the first venture melts away the souls, freed from their glass, like so much candle wax. He pours the remains over the kilns. The red ministers will be pleased, he says, offering these spirits far more affection than the slurry of souls now dripping over the clay. They're returning, he tells you. Or waking, at least. The forge's strength grows. Okay, so I need to do more. Welp, I have more souls. Let's do that again. <coughs> I guess I have to provide a condemned experiment or we'll come back later, which I don't want to do. Yeah, let's do it. The first venture smiles at your offering. They appreciate ingenuity. Ooh, case of light the Forge of Souls is operational once more. Yes, I did it. The venture hands you a torch and instructs you in the melting down of your condemned experiment. The remnants you gather up in a clay bowl and with... Mortal and Pestle? Shouldn't that be Mortar and Pestle? Or maybe that's a pun? Mortal and a condemned experiment? I don't know. Uh, grind to a fine powder. This you sprinkle over one of the empty kilns. Good. Good, the venturer tells you. This will inspire them. Make them remember their purpose. The forge repaired. The forge is filled with a clamor of voices and a coruscation of light. In his delight, the first venturer goes to embrace you. 
but thinks better of it. You've done it, Captain. The servants of the forge have woken. Come, let us see who we can make. He leads you into the newly bright chambers. Along the way, he introduces you to the host of spirits. You meet thrones and dominions, the red ministers, to whom the venture is differential in the extreme, the principalities of... of... Calstion, the sisters in green and gold, and the white minister herself. <clears throat> the forge is repeopled with its spirits. The real work can now begin. The great chambers of the Forge of Souls are ablaze with light. Smoke in blue and gold and black belches from the furnaces, attended by spirits in all manner of shape and hue and size. The spirits guard their dominions jealously, and must be entreated to lend their skill in the creation of new souls. There's work to be done. Donate items to certain of the spirits to gain unique aspects. These aspects can then be combined to create something of your choosing. Um, okay. They wanted me to make scribe spinsters first, didn't they? Oh man, I can't make anything. Aspect of Verdance. Aspect of Dominion. Oh, so, oh, I thought this was Bronzewood and this was... I forgot what that symbol's used for, like Bohemia or something? But no, let's, let's look at what it takes to make the actual aspects. I can craft crew members. Ah, oh, excuse me. Two jumbles of undistinguished souls for an aspect of incarnadine. Mm, Verdance is bronze wood. Aspect of the hourglass for unseasoned hours. Dominion is two panes of stained glass. I don't have very much stained glass, unfortunately. Okay, let me let me write this down because I'm going to want to bring a whole bunch of this back. Okay. I got it written down. If I leave, it says you will need to pay to enter the forge again. Okay, what do I have to pay, though? Like, surely I don't have to rekindle it, and I don't need to find it again. Hmm. You will, however, keep any aspects you've already gained. Oh, what is this? Wait, I... How come leaving the forge has, like, left all this other options to do with the forge? I'm confused. Where was I before? Because this looks like this is the forge. <clears throat> Speak to the man of the forge's base. No, that's not it. Enter the forge with the Lamentation's permission. Hmm, I need the Lamentation's gratitude, which I probably get by making a scribe spinster. Forge a companion. Wait, a com companion? Like an officer? You could make an officer for your crew. What does that do? That's kind of creepy. Allow your Blemigan to enter the forge. You'll lose your Blemigan Voyager. Hmm. So that's what it wanted to do. It wanted to enter the forge. Oh, I got a little screamy baby on my desk. Hold on. Look at this little baby. Hey. Girl, do you think I should let the Blemigan go inside the forge? What do you think? Well, I think to make another scribe spinster, I need to get into the forge. And to do that, I need a Testament of the Feather, because I don't think I'm going to get their gratitude before I make the scribe. Hmm. It's just weird that I can forge stuff without being in the forge. I don't get that. Let's consult the spirits of the forge for the clay conductor. Their voice must be perfect, the conductor implores, his eyes bright. A template from the son's daughter. The sisters in green and gold raise their limbs as though shrugging. The red ministers are implacable behind their woven masks. The principalities scurry away from you and will not consider your request. 
only the white minister, bearing her voice in a silken casket, consents to hear you out. She informs you that a new soul requires a template, but the Amaranthine Edict forbids new templates from being created. If one wishes to receive an exemption, one must visit the son's daughter at death's door. You will need a testament of salt to petition her. It's a good thing I have one. Why is the son's daughter at death's door? The clay conductor punctuates all of this with a grumbled monologue of impatience. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, I've been waiting for a while. All right, let's allow my Blumkin to enter the forge. What's the worst that could happen? The Blumkin stands on your foot. It reaches up to your hand and gives it a firm, solemn pat. This is where it wishes to be. The Blumkin clambers through the furnace gate and into the forge. It does not look back. Later, when you ask the Venturer of the Blemigan's well-being, he chuckles. Cocky little thing, isn't it? Didn't want any help figuring out the workings of the forge. Funniest thing. It made an identical copy of itself. A bit fatter, perhaps. Calmer, for sure. A mushroom at peace with what it is. That is, being a mushroom. Last I saw of them, they were heading into the Lyceum. Your Blemigan Voyager has created something to grow old and fraud fraudulent with. It has traveled, adventured, and now it retires with companionship. What human could ask for more? Aw, that's so sweet. You went to the Lyceum, huh? Came to Steering Enigma. I'm glad that the Blemigan, the Blemigan's story. I mean, it didn't really have a story to begin with, but I'm I'm glad that Blemigan ended up having a story and a happy ending. <clears throat> Well, let's choose a new mascot, the inadvisably big dog. Do you want to go replicate yourself, buddy? Let's go back into the Lyceum, see if we can find the Blemigans. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Unless they're in with a clerk of sevens. No. They could be in with the Lamentation of Mists, I guess. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, Screamy Baby's back on my desk. Screaming. She wants food. Right. I need to come back here with a bunch of stuff. And there's also a bunch of prospects I could do as well. I was thinking of going back to Sky Barnet to grab all that stuff to bring back to the Forge of Souls and try to get some aspects and stuff, but I don't think there's any point in doing that, really. I mean, there's kind of a point, but I don't think I want to come back to the Forge of Souls until I've been to Death's Doorstep and gotten the template from the son's daughter. Plus, I need to go over there anyway for the Fortune and Navigator's quest as well. So I think I should do a bunch of stuff over there before I consider coming back to the Forge of Souls. So, I think I'll end this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to Death's Doorstep for the second time.